Hi everyone, today we are going to study connection management in computer networks. So what is connection management? Connection management refers to the process of establishing, maintaining and terminating connections between devices or systems in a network. So basically connection management refers to the process of first of all establishing a connection because if you want to have a dedicated connection between two devices before transmitting data then you need to establish a connection now once you have established a connection you need to maintain that connection throughout the process of data transmission and once you are done with data transmission and that connection is no longer required you will terminate the connection so these are the three major things required in the process of any connection management that is establishing maintaining and terminating connections between the devices or systems in a computer network or simply a network so this process of connection management involves various protocols and techniques to ensure reliable and efficient communication between network entities right so there are a lot of protocols a lot of techniques that are followed so that there is a reliable and efficient communication between the various devices which have established a connection among themselves Connection management is crucial in networking as it ensures the smooth flow of data between the devices or system because once a connection is established then it can be ensured that there would be a smooth flow of data between two devices. Now some commonly used connection management protocols in networking are the TCP protocol which is also known as transmission control protocol and the other most commonly known or used protocol is the user datagram protocol which is the UDP protocol and the third one being internet control message protocol or ICMP. So these protocols provide you the mechanisms for establishing, maintaining and terminating connections. So whatever mechanisms are required to establish a connection, then to maintain a connection and then finally to terminate a connection are provided by these three major protocols which is your transmission control protocol TCP, user datagram protocol UDP and internet control message protocol IC. MP. Connection management plays a vital role in preventing connection congestion in the network. Once a dedicated connection has been established, to a lot of extent it prevents any kind of congestion in the network and it on incorporates flow control mechanisms to regulate the rate of data transmission ensuring that the network does not become overloaded. So uh, there are two major advantages of connection management. First of all, it prevents any kind of congestion in the networks. Second, it incorporates flow control and we know that flow control basically regulates the flow of data and it uh, prevents a slow receiver from being swamped by a fast sender and this uh, uh, finally ensures that the network is not overloaded. A TCP connection begins with a client doing an active open to the server. So it is basically the client. See, if we uh, if we uh, think of a client server scenario, so obviously it will be the client which will send a request for uh, opening a connection with the server. So in a TCP connection, client does an active open to a server. So if I assume that the server had earlier done a passive open, the two sides engage in an exchange of messages to establish the connection. So once the two sides uh, um, exchange the request and response messages for the uh, opening of a connection, after that a connection is established and then both of them can exchange data messages.
Only after this connection establishment phase is over do the two sides begin sending data. As I told you in my previous video also that a dedicated connection management establishment is just like a dial-up telephone connection. Like before, uh, if you want to talk to someone, that means when you before you want to exchange the messages, you have to establish a connection. So how do you establish a connection? By dialing up that person's phone number. When you dial up that person's phone number, it's like sending a connection request to the server when the other person uh, picks up the uh, phone it is like the server responding to the client request and when uh, the server responds to the client request the messages get start getting exchanged similarly when the other side receives the phone in response to the bell that rang then you can start talking to each other or start exchanging messages so this connection establishment is quite similar to a dial-up telephone connection so that means only after the connection establishment phase is over that means once you have established a connection then the two sides can start exchanging messages likewise as soon as participant is done sending data it closes one direction of the connection which causes TCP to initiate a round of connection termination messages. So basically in a simple language when both the sides are done exchanging the data, it, the connection is no longer required because you know that the connection was required only for the purpose of exchanging data. Once you are done with it, you do not require that uh, connection unnecessarily. So what would be the best thing to do? The best thing to do would be to terminate the connection. So uh, basically uh, the third step after the exchange of data messages is to terminate the connection and this now round is known as connection termination. This is also done through the exchange of messages between the client and server. That means the client sends a connection termination request and the server then gives a connection termination response and then the connection is terminated. Now for all this, that is these three things wherein you uh, 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 establish a connection. To establish a connection, there is a proper three-way handshaking process. So these, uh, the, these three steps which are involved in establishing a connection are known as the three-way handshake process, which is basically a TCP three-way handshake process. So we also know, call it by the name TCP three-way handshake process or the three-way handshaking. Now, what is this three-way handshaking? So, uh, this connection establishment protocol that can be seen as a way of how connection is established. So, basically, you need to follow a protocol to establish a connection. So, when I say a protocol to establish a connection, that means how the connection is actually established. So, TCP controls the transmission of data in a reliable way. As we've already started, but the difference between TCP and UDP is that T TCP is a reliable protocol and UDP is an unreliable protocol. So when we use TCP as a protocol for three-way handshaking, then TCP controls the transmission of data in a reliable way. Now let us see how this mechanism works. The first step. Before we look at the steps of three-way handshaking, just look, uh, we should have a look at this diagram wherein you can see that there is a host computer P and there is a host computer Q. So the three-way handshaking starts with if I uh, consider this to be the client computer and this to be the server computer. Or in other words, if this is the computer that wants to uh, transmit the data. So in that case, this host will receive sync messages and the host Q will all uh, first of all the client side or host P will send the sin messages and the host Q will receive the sin messages after the host Q has received the sin messages then uh, it will send the sin messages to the host P and then the host P will send an acknowledgement of the reception of these messages back to the host Q and the host Q then receives this acknowledgement. So we will study all this in detail. 
how uh, uh, these messages are exchanged and what are these send messages so this step one as you can see in the first step the client wants to establish a connection with the server this is the first and foremost requirement of a connection establishment that there is a client which wants to establish a connection with the server so what does it do now when it wants to establish a connection it sends a segment to its sin now as you can see here the client sends a segment the client sends a segment with sin so what does this sin represent this sin represents sequ synchronized sequence number sin stands for synchronized sequence number which basically informs the server that the client is likely to start a communication and with what sequence number it starts segments with so there will be small small segments of data which will be sent one by one so which sequence number these segments would start with is identified with the help of sin or synchronized sequence number and it is also a message to the server that the client is likely to start a communication so when a client sends a sin sequence number x to the server it means that the server or the host q now knows that the host p wants to initiate a communication and the segment that it will start sending would be with sequence number x right okay now the tcp connection begins with the client doing an active open to a server so sending these sin messages means is what you call send doing an active open to the server so this tcp connection begins with the client doing an active open to the server that is sending a sin message to the server with the sequence number now assuming that the server had earlier done a passive open the two sides engage in an exchange of messages to establish the connection that is once the server accepts this request then the server uh, both the sides start uh, exchanging messages once the connection is uh, establishment messages are exchanged only after this connection establishment phase is over the two sides begin sending data so as soon as a participant is done sending data it closes one direction of the connection which causes tcp to initiate a round of connection termination messages as you know data communication is in two directions it is bidirectional so when one side is done with the sending of messages it will close that one end of the direct one direction of the connection and when that sending party closes that one direction of the connection the tcp automatically initiates a round of connection termination messages it sends connection termination messages across both the client and server which then lead to the termination of connection okay now the step 2 is your sin plus ack Now, sin, as you know, represents your synchronized sequence number, and ACK act represents the acknowledgement. Now, when the server receives the sin messages from the client as a as a uh, as a request for initiating the establishment connection. connection establishment server responds to the client request with sin plus ack signal bits so clearly you can see that the client has sent the sin messages and the server sends the sin plus ack messages in response so server responds to the client request with the sin plus ack signal bits set so ack basically is acknowledgement which signifies the response of the segment it received right so sin is the basically sequence number of that segment with which the client wanted to initiate the data transmission so ack basically acknowledges the response of that particular segment with the particular sequence number it received and sin signifies obviously with what sequence number it is likely to start the segments with now the step 3 is your acknowledgement so this is the final step in the final step the client acknowledges the response of the server as you can see here this is the third step wherein the client is sending the acknowledgement to the uh, 
server so in the final part the client acknowledges the response of the server and they both establish a reliable connection so the last step in which the client acknowledges the response of the server after this a reliable connection is established with which they will start actual data transfer so these three steps are known as the uh, three way handshaking of connection establishment <coughs> So basically, you can see there is a TCP client, there is a TCP server. The TCP client sends the SYN messages to the TCP server. The TCP server sends the SYN and acknowledgement message to the uh, TCP client. And then in return, the TCP client also sends an acknowledgement message to the TCP server's response. And with this, we... Uh, start uh, um, with this we are done with the connection establishment and finally once the connection uh, has been established both the sites can start exchanging messages so this is uh, how a connection is established using the tcp connection